Okay, we're recording. Right, this is where this is the screen you'd come to when you log in as a lecturer. One of the first things you'd probably need to do is set up a meeting room. Now, one thing about Adobe Connect is that the meeting rooms are reusable. You can use them over and over again. So you can actually set up a single meeting room at the start of a course, get a link for that meeting room, and reuse it. Just put it at the top of your course in Moodle, and it's the same every week. It's the same every time they use it, which is very convenient. So you go to meetings. You could have used create new meeting there, or we would meetings, and we would hit new meeting here. Okay, and uh, we'll call this meeting a just a test. Now, they use the phrase meeting. I prefer actually the phrase meeting room because meeting would indicate a start time and a finish time. But because you can reuse it over and over again, the, the term room, the idea of treating it in your head as a room it works a lot better. Okay, now you can have your own URL for this room, you know, if you wanted to. So, um, or you can let it generate it. Now, you'll see down here you have start time duration. That becomes irrelevant if you're going to use it over and over again. So just ignore them. Right. Language English, use the standard template, okay? Now, if you have only registered users, it means that you'll have to register all the students within Adobe Connect. Far too much trouble. Just go the easy way. Anyone who has the link. Now, this means this is going to be a pretty obscure link. People are not going to stumble on this. No. So only if they're given the link will they be able to come in. And that's all you really need to do. There is another page and it's really to do with adding other people in your organization in as uh, teachers as well in this room. Uh, might be worth doing, but in general, you just would finish with that. Now, what you'd have then is you'd have a link to your meeting room. And probably what you would do then is you would take that link, well, or let's see, right click, copy that link, go into Moodle. And Moodle would be structured in sections, usually by weeks or topics. But up in the top section, which is a generic section, I would put in a link there to um, to a um, uh, to the class that's going to be used every week. And you'd say, this is the class, this is the room that's going to be used every week. Now, it's important that students log in as a guest, and I could probably show you that later. But we'll go in as a teacher now, for starters, OK? So let's click on this, and it's shooting up. It's going to shoot up a new window somewhere. It brought it over here. Okay, so let's bring that in. So this is it. By the way, it's all web-based, so you don't need any software really installed on your machine. You can do it from any machine. I can do it from my phone. Uh, now there's limited functionality on the phone, but it's web-based. It's based on Flash, so I know that pretty well any machine I go on to anywhere I can get into a room. Also the students don't need to install any software on there. So it's there. That's an empty room. Okay. Now what you probably need then is to uh, generally people what they'll do is they'll upload some PowerPoint slides into the room. They would this is we've set up our room so that can be used for the whole course. We publish it in Moodle. It's there for everybody to come in. That's that job done. Then on a weekly basis probably what you would do is you'd prepare a set of PowerPoint slides that would be on your computer somewhere and you've got to upload them into it. So let's see if I can find any PowerPoint slides. It's under share my screen, share document. Okay, and we would browse my computer. Okay, now I wonder if I anything I have, uh, okay, there's a presentation I gave to Fall Charland a uh, while ago, sure we'll see what that is, I can't even remember it. November 08. <laughs> It's a long time ago. Probably changed my mind and all these ideas since yeah. then. Okay, so that what that's doing is it's actually pulling it in and converting it. By the way, it's not fully reliable at converting the latest versions of PowerPoint. So you need to pull them in and check through them. Some of the really the smart graphics that's in the latest versions of PowerPoints, it can have trouble converting it. If the worst comes to the worst and you you get it in and you look at it and it's not right, you save your PowerPoint under the old version of PowerPoint and it'll come in fine. So there was a presentation and what I would recommend you do now is run through your slides, see does the animation come in. Okay, it all seems to be working fine. I'm sure I've done that before. So you've got your slides and you're ready to go for your class as it were. Now, um, 
as I say back am I going back or forward here by the way here's a little option here you can show up a sidebar with all your slides on it the students don't see that you can actually go up and down and, and jump yes. in slides so you can jump back and forth the students won't see that they'll see that as a big window so that can be quite handy uh, in addition to that by the way you can actually show if you have notes in your PowerPoint you can bring them up here and read from them and the students won't see that as well so that's an extra feature now and we've brought up our slide there now as I say the students would have the same link uh, they would have got that link here now, I won't go in now to putting it in Moodle but what I will do is I'll see if I can open another browser that's Chrome we're in so let's open Firefox and what we'll do here is we will see what would it look like for the student logging in okay so the student would follow the link to the classroom that obscure link and you see what they get here so they they're not registered on the system so there's no point in them putting in a username and password it has to be very clear a lot of students make the mistake they try to log in so we say for their live classes just go in as a guest so you would put in ask them to put in their real name and that will fire up the classroom for the student okay so there you have the student is coming in this is in italics that's us Mickey Mouse we're in as a student here we can see the teacher okay and uh, so I'm going to put the student away to one side just be aware that they can come in okay so let's go back to where we were in as teacher okay it's that one there I think okay right here so here we're in as teacher and we can see the student is in there by the way okay so we're ready to start giving a class y you could actually load up the PowerPoint a few days before if you wanted to day before I'd recommend have the PowerPoints ready yes. about a day before at least a couple of hours before in case something goes wrong and have them upload in the class and then come back 10-15 minutes before the classroom and come in now the, what you need to do then is you're about to teach you really need to check your audio first audio is the most important part so so we'll turn on our audio phone audio testing one two three. testing one two three it seems to be now, working the that's now the reason that's coming out the microphone do you know why it is because we're broadcasting, because we're broadcasting out here and in, and, and, it's in, and it's coming in here so I bet if I went to the students window if I can find my mouse okay, just for the benefit, okay, just for the benefit of the recording I'm going to bring that here's in the students, here's in the students window you know what I'm going to do in the student by window the way, by the way look at how little there is in terms of menus across the top for the student okay okay and what I'm going to do here is mute the speaker for the students no student would normally do that but because we're using two on one machine we better do that here okay so it looks actually that's often the way the, the most reliable way for the teacher to know that they're broadcasting sound well is to ask the students can you hear me <laughs> you know but there is an audio if you want to be sure and all uh, belt and braces before you start there is a wizard here meeting okay audio setup wizard we click through this first thing do our speakers work <laughs> Okay, that's coming out here, by the way, in my, my headset, okay? Uh, um, which microphone do you want to use? We're using this microphone, the headset. There is a microphone here as well, which is quite good, actually. The cam Those camera microphones are very good. Um, so, what we want to do... Oh, sorry, I went... It was next, wasn't it? Okay, so now this is, allows the teacher, tutor, on their own to test... Testing one, two, three. I can see the recording bar is moving and my microphone is working properly. Um, let's stop that and let's replay it. Okay. Testing one, two, three. I can see the recording bar is moving and my microphone it, is working actually, properly. It sounds it, like it was belting across as if it was too loud, but it doesn't seem to be too loud. So we know our okay. audio is working. Testing one, two, three. Um, and next. 
you can ignore the rest of them. They're a bit sophisticated. You can actually set it so that there's a silence level. If you're working in an area that's a slight background noise, yeah. it'll detect the level of that, and it will stop broadcasting unless the sound goes above that level. Yeah. Now, what often that happens is it clips right. the start yeah. of your yeah. sentence yeah. Yeah. because that's it nice. just takes... So you, you if you talk, yeah. you know... So you're best work in a quiet area, and uh, it works a lot better. So... So that's your audio test that you're ready to start teaching. Oh, it's probably a good idea to use a webcam if people don't have broadband problems. Uh, the talking head there makes the students feel more connected, so we can. Uh, uh, so it, it first gives you a preview, so maybe we want to do that here. Sometimes I think it's bad. You're looking at this screen, and if the camera is coming from there, it's a side shot. So sometimes I think you should try to have the camera where you're generally looking. Um, so that looks good. So we will start sharing that. Okay, now it looks like we're broadcasting camera, we're broadcasting audio, we've got the slides, we're ready to go. Can you check the camera? Is the student able to see it? Uh, no, actually, but this is, I, that seems to be are reliable. Whereas I'm not hearing audio coming back from me. I am actually seeing this on the screen, so it doesn't seem to be uh, necessary. Uh, so um, we know we're ready to go and we can start teaching. Now when you start teaching, start recording every session. So meeting and record the meeting again they call it meeting you could call it a class so I mean it's good practice you're probably giving a course there might be 10 to 15 lectures in the course of this course so it's probably best this will automatically record the date so it might be useful to say what are we going to talk about today so I'd say graduated approach It's just a test because I want to be able to. You could write a summary. My own. You're always busy. You never read those summaries. So a good name, a self-explanatory name, is probably the best way to label your meetings. And we're good to go. We will get a recording thing here. Okay. Be aware that you can hover over that and pause recording at any stage. So we're ready, we're recording now. How is everybody today? What I'm going to be talking to you about is a graduated approach to using learning technologies. Okay, so let's go on. What's new in learning? I wonder what was new in 2008. <laughs> oh, asynchronous discussion. Actually, what happened to me here? I had that actually done on timed animation for effect. So asynchronous discussion, still a lot of people not using it testing, wikis, social networking, not a lot has changed, virtual learning and big things in the last couple of years are MOOCs, free online learning, which is actually, you know, I, I think it is actually for the likes of yourself, uh, not so much for us, uh, and you'll probably have to find a way to exploit free online learning and fit in the middle of it and uh, but I think there is a way through it, but it is, in other words, I mean, we're going to be providing free online courses that some people out there are providing commercially. We just did one on Introduction to Lean Sigma. That's very popular, and there's a lot of providers around the country going into companies, and we just gave a free course on it. That's what's going to happen. A lean Sigma quality uh, in manufacturing, a lot of people teach Lean Sigma. It's really uh, process improvement. Business process improvement is very similar to it. Um, things like that, lower level ones, we will probably give for free. By the way, this is all going on recording, so it will be boring to the hell out of you. Um, uh, with the idea of getting them interested in our more advanced ones. And you probably should consider that yourselves as well, putting some free introductory courses online. It, it's both. It's to advertise, and and we don't test them at the end of it. We sell them the next level. But we will do both in the future. We will probably use it as a cheap way to come in at the low level, do your exams, and then go on to the next level. So this was 2008. Many learners were up at 400. We're about 1,300 this year. So um, 
just shows you it's just growing each year. The demand is there. People are becoming aware of it. So now what I want to make you aware is that you can have these slides uh, and you can leave room for spontaneity. You can, one thing you should be aware of is, is that there's a pointer here so you can point to different places on the slide. Okay. But also you can draw on the slide. Okay. Now, normally on most machines you'd be there with your mouse and you'd say, I want to draw a line and it'd be just terrible. Yeah. And that's why you would use something like this. And now this is not, this, uh, each machine has to be set up. These things have some software that we sort of have to disenable and I probably haven't disenabled it, so yeah. So, you know, you can draw so we can see does it have to be in the evening? Okay, so this I think gives a more an spontaneous approach to teaching if you take your slides and start writing on them. So, and a lot of people even they're teaching something complicated, they want to be able to, um, that's not calibrated that well, I see. It's actually trite. Um, so they want to be able to draw like this. Why does, oh, this is what I wanted. I wanted this rectangle and get rid of the fill color. And okay, and maybe I would draw. I think I can get arrows and things. No. Oh. I, I don't know. So we could have an arrow and, you know, these types of things. Uh, and then you have free as well, so you can just start. You know, actually the colour's not so good, but um, so you can see the sort of spontaneous things you can do. You can take this and start typing in. So, so there's your spontaneity. Um, I wonder, can I get rid of everything now? Off my slides. Just the rubber. So, and on we go. So that's that so we can teach to slides we can use the animation from powerpoint we can go back and forth we can draw on it um, by the way we can take questions from students through the chat area or if um, a student puts up their hand and well that's me putting up my hand isn't it if mickey mouse put up his hand uh, we'd be able to say, uh, well, uh, Mickey, if you have a microphone there, we can uh, enable your microphone. So uh, then in, if I can find this here, in suddenly the microphone icon appears in uh, Mickey's, um, so he's that extra feature. And by the way, that's how uh, he puts up his hand. And you can also use encourage students to use other, you know, if students are aware of this, they can, they can, uh, very important to tell good jokes during class. <laughs> and they can laugh. Uh, they just write down there. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Most people don't use these, possibly because we really don't encourage it's not that we discourage them, it's that we haven't got around to encourage them and they're not aware that they're... But So raising the hand is quite popular so we can allow them to talk. So Mickey could start talking and it would come out. So let's take him away again. This is back in the teachers. Okay, now something comes up in a class or you may deliberately plan it and you just want a white sheet to work off. There is where you um, stop sharing your PowerPoints and then you use what's called a whiteboard. Okay, now a whiteboard is probably more, I would say more accurately called a flip chart. You know where you'd have flip charts yeah, in training rooms? Yeah. The reason I think it's more like a flip chart is, by the way, you can see over there how it looks to Michael Mouse. Um, he sees what's going on, so uh, we won't have it in the recording, but you'll see it be replicated. So it's almost like the slides, but it's just completely white. The other reason I say it's like a flip chart is if you, you can have as many of them as you like, you can keep them for again, and each there's pages and pages of them. Also, they have the one disadvantage of flip charts. They're quite small in space. So we can start drawing here. What did I want to do? I wanted a shape, didn't I? I like the 
those arrows. So we can start drawing. Okay, you can see it's it's coming to the students one as well. So we have that and we fill up that and then we go on to our maths teachers like using this and go on to the next page. And you can fill page after page and you can go back to previous pages. So you have your white clipboard yes. there or whatever for drawing. Okay. Um, so it can give you an option, let's say if you have a 20 pages with something on them and you want to come back to a total one. Uh, is it, is it, does it give you that nice thing down there? I haven't seen that, no. Yes. You'll have to go through it the tedious way. But it does give you the option that uh, like we can stop sharing this and we can... You can... Sorry. Share a whiteboard. That's another whiteboard. How do you get out old whiteboards? You can create multiple whiteboards. You know, and maybe just use a few pages and then keep track of them. Actually it's not it's not like you can name them. There's whiteboard seven, eight, there are different white why it started numbering that seven of I have no idea. But it just goes to show you there was the PowerPoint. Now what I wanted to show you next is and this is quite common in distance learning is demonstrations of how to use a computer package. So say for instance uh you were to you wanted to teach uh, Excel, so let's let's bring up um, if I can find it. Mm, that's not the way to spell it. Okay, so we'll bring up Excel wherever it comes up. And we want to, so I'm working off screen, the students can't see it. Uh, we've brought up Excel off screen. Okay. Um, I don't know, I must have had something open before here. Okay, so we've Excel here. Okay, there. Now, one thing I would re recommend is that's taking up a whole screen. Our visibility is quite good. It's going to be compressed into a smaller thing for the student. So, one thing is generally most packages have some sort of a zoom function. So, I think it's under view here. So, we will zoom to which which way are we going? We're going down, is it? No, that's not the way I wanted to go. Zoom. To, to be honest, which is about one hundred and fifty percent. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to share this. So we're going to share my screen. Okay, now it's going to ask me. By the way, no, something wrong here. It sh there's two screens here. It should have asked me. Oh, here, it is. here's the menu here. Put it over here. I'll bring that over so we can see it on the recording first monitor or second monitor. Uh, we're working on the second monitor at the moment. Excel is on the first monitor, so I think that's the one to do there. So share. Okay. Now, this is I'm sharing the screen. Actually, I can't see it because I want I wanted to show you on Michael Mouse's one that's actually been shared. Okay. Uh, bring it over this so it's on the recording. So we're working over here on the right hand screen that we can't see but you can see Michael Mouse can see it. By the way the aspect ratio isn't great for it but you can see why I zoomed up the cells. Okay so if we were talking away and uh, I'm going to go into the spreadsheet and I'm going to say here's the elements of a spreadsheet. These are made up of cells. You can write words into cells so you can say um, um, okay, so you can write words into cells. Now this is coming up here. A little bit of a delay, by the way. Not a problem, by the way. So the height is 20. The width is 30. So the area is 600. But we wouldn't write 600. We would write equal to this cell multiplied by this cell. 
So this shows you how the computer can do the calculation for you. But not only that, if your data changes in the future, like if that becomes 40, the computer. So you can do an explanation for students and they're watching you do it. So whether it's teaching an accounting package or, um, you know, AutoCAD, Excel, anything at all, you can do your live online demonstrations. This is not necessarily the it, this is one way of teaching packages online. It probably is more recommended to make short recordings or to get lots of free short recordings on the web, by the way, of whatever you're teaching and post them up in Moodle. But sometimes students like to see it done live. So you could actually, in a course, do it both ways. You can put up short recordings and then you say, I'm going to do a demonstration live in class. So come to the class, do the demonstration. And say, did everyone get that? Did everyone see how I managed to... Uh, Enter in that and they calculated the new value. So let's go back and look in here. Do you see what's in here? And you would so, see, see what I'm showing here. I'm going to show you the formula bar. And that's been highlighted. Do you see this? That's what they're seeing. And we can discuss this formula and things like that. So there's a certain interaction and in getting questions for the class that is nice in live, even though you can do recorded. So that's... Uh, also, by the way, there is a feature, and I can't show it on the recording because it's over here on the right-hand screen, where you can pop up on the bar. You'll see that there is Adobe Connect has a little item on the task bar that you can get, and you can actually pause the screen share and annotate. And what that does is it throws... Oh, I see the the clock is recording as well. It throws this up on the screen and then you can start. Where's my drawing? Is that me or is that? Oh, that's Mickey Mouse. This I'm getting confused now about which. That looks, see how I knew that by the way, it was in italics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this one here is me. So. I have the drawing tools here, so I can I can pick my pencil. Um, oh, let's try the highlighter for a change. And we can start saying, OK, I want to draw your attention to this. So basically what you've done is you're sharing an application. That application could be changing now. Uh, something else could be happening in that application. Um, oh, I didn't want to help. OK. So something else could be happening here. It's not been updated on the screen. What we've done is we took a snapshot, brought it onto our screen. We can start doing all sorts of things on this screen. And then we can go, what's down here, watch this. Resume sharing. And what's on there will suddenly be updated here, I think. Oh, that's that's me. It should be updated on on. Mickey Mouse is one. So everything's here has been replicated here. So he can see the update on that. Okay, so um Why that the highlighting wasn't updated. Uh because it's it's basically like you took a snapshot, you started drawing on top of it, and then you said no, we want to go back to looking at the application. So it got rid of that snapshot. It'll be in the recording, but it it's it's it doesn't we were just working on a on a, an image of it and then they threw that image away and we're going back to sharing that so that's actually been now what I'm going to do now is uh, bring is that me share Brian Mulligan I'm not sure if this is me I'm getting good no that's Mickey Mouse where am I thanks this one no, that's wrong. I'm confusing myself. This is me. No, that's not me. That's me. Okay, so we'll stop sharing. Now, I think we've more or less shown you the three different ways of showing content, bringing in PowerPoint, working way through slides, drawing on top of slides, um, uh, having a whiteboard with nothing on it flip chart type of thing, and then also sharing applications. Um, uh, 
that's pretty well it. You talk, you turn on your camera, you invite students to ask you questions through the chat area. They can, you can turn on their mic as well if you want. I think Mickey's mic is on, so we could disable that there. Um, but other than that, and you record, and at the end of your session, you hover over that. By the way, if during the session you want to take a break or if you want to say something off the record, you can click on this and pause and then start recording again. Okay? But at the end, you, you would stop recording. Okay, so let's um, no. What you have done now, it's it's generated a recording. So what we need to do is we need to go go to the. I'm going to close down Mickey Mouse's one there and get rid of him. He's left the room, as it were. But we're still here. We've got a recording. We've got to publish that for the students. So uh, we don't need this um, Excel anymore. So what we need to do is we need to find the place we were. Um, Do you remember, what happened now is I've, I've got rid of, I've minimized the room we were teaching in. Let me just bring it up again. That's the room we were teaching in. We've stopped recording. Uh, the students have left. Uh, what we need to do is find the window that that manages our recordings and manages our classrooms that we originally logged into. By the way, it's open in another window. But if you couldn't find it, you would just go meeting, manage meeting information. Now, what happens to that is sometimes it opens that window in behind. Now, it's bringing it up in front, so that's fine. Do you remember this one here? After we created the meeting room, which we're going to use over and over again, it gave us this meeting room information. Now, if you look along this line here, you'll see that recordings are here. Now, I should have probably shown you that earlier and said there are no recordings there. There should be at least one recording there now. And there is. You know, remember I wrote that in as the name of the recording. Now, something about this. This is a private recording. People cannot access that. Uh, so what we need to do is click here, set the access type, make it public. We won't bother sending the password. We'll just make it public. Now, we have made it public, but we need the link to it. Yes. So here we click on that. That gives us information about this recording. It's only 70 minutes long. I thought it was longer. We got through that quick enough. Okay. Actually, that's just it. My, I'm 32 minutes on, on this recording. This is the recording that you may want to, to play back. Okay. okay. So, um, so uh, that's the URL for the recording of this week's lecture. There'll be one of these each week. So we have to make it public. We've got to go. There is here, or where is the date? Uh, there it is there. OK. Uh, but what you would do is you would copy that link, and you would go off to Moodle and post it in the week. Or you would post it in the news forum or whatever, and you can post it. Um, now, those recordings are streamed from the server okay. which in a way has a benefit of very difficult for the students to download and copy they have to view them in a streamed so format here. So here. The, no the, our server we're on the hosted service uh, out in the cloud from adobe they're held out there right. and the trouble is when you decide to go to another provider they've got your recordings that's a disadvantage of it but it has an element of security of people copying in it, going off with it. Now, they can distribute the link and give it to people, but they can't take it away with them, as it were. But some people consider that to be a disadvantage. They want the learner to be able to download it onto a memory stick, you know, maybe at work, and bring it home where they don't have good broadband. Less and less of an issue as the years go on. However, there is a feature... Uh, by the way, you can edit recordings, which really means you can chop bits out. So if you have some bits in there you think are inappropriate or you know not useful, you can maybe too much chat at the start or something in the middle where something broke down, you can chop bits out. And uh, okay, so I'm not going to go into that here. 
I'm not really going into this here, but if you want to make a downloadable version, you make MP4. Now, I'm not going to go through that now. It's quite a tedious, it's not very well designed in this. What happens is it flips open the recording in a new window and starts playing, and you have to let it play through. And as it plays, it's downloading into an MP4 file. And when it's finished playing, the MP4 file will be ready. So it's quite tedious. To, uh, uh, well, you can do it in the background when you're doing your email. I don't think you have yes. to have the screen open, so you could make it go, and somebody could be sort of half listening and letting it go. Um, so you you could be doing something else on the computer. What they say, make sure is it that it doesn't flip to a, a screensaver in the middle of it. I don't know why. I just want to make you aware of that, that if you're unhappy with these recordings that can only be viewed while they're connected to the internet, uh, you can make a downloadable version. We'll just have a quick look at that recording. We open it up there. There's its coming. And uh, see what it looked like. Always a bit slow connecting. Thing. And, uh, Here, OK. Be aware that you can hover over that and so pause recording at any stage. When we started so we're ready. We're recording now. How is everybody today? So I started drawing. So, so you know, you can draw, enable your microphone. So uh, then, in let's give you the option that, uh, the like, we can stop sharing this, and we can. I think we went on to share. Zoom to, I don't know, I must have something up. Oh. Okay, here's the elements of a spreadsheet. These are made of cells. You can write <laughs> words into cells so you can see. Was no, the clock is recording as well. Okay, we'll leave it at that. It shows this up on the screen and then you can. I think that's more or less all I would do. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the. Um, this recording now.